This is going to be a fairly short project then where I make something in Wings and then render it in Bryce. In Wings 3D, I'm going to right click to bring up the context sensitive menu and create a cube. Use this icon here to select entire objects, select the cube, switch to faces and then right click to bring up the context sensitive menu and inset those faces. Now just moving the mouse left and right will inset the faces but if you hold the control key down you can do it by discrete steps so I'm going to aim for 30% that's in the top left hand corner you can see that value right once that's done left click to set that right click again and choose intrude and then holding the control key down again move it so that it intrudes to the point where the faces meet in a corner left click and these faces are now meeting in a corner but there have been multiple points in those corners because the the object needs simplifying now so if we click select entire object right click and choose clean up that will fuse these corners together so that these become one vertex we can now select press space to deselect everything use this selection tool to select the edges click on this edge any one of these internal edges will do use I for identical so they're all selected and then right click and bevel and just bevel it a little bit and then left click to set the bevel level right click again scale uniform and if you scale it in so it's somewhere in this region just so it's inside so you've created middle button to rotate your view that sort of shape with these internal faces selected right click again and the mirror command will then mirror that cube multiple times along those faces to create this interesting interlocking shape. Space again to deselect any faces that were selected. Select these edge selection tool and select one of these outer edges. Press I for identical edges so they're all selected. Right click and bevel. So just bevel those down a bit. Now what happens when this entire object is selected, entire object selection, and you smooth this those bevel edges will form a sharp edge. So press S for smooth and that now forms a sharp, sharp edge but these internal edges have been smoothed more. Smooth again gives you the certain softening on these outside edges but they're still a little bit crisper than the inside edges and you can probably risk one more smooth level so smooth again. You can see the progress bar along the bottom shown that we're starting to reach the limitations of what uh, what's going to be practical here. So that's essentially the shape. So go file, export as wavefront object and we'll call this uh, woven cube 3. So I've made some more before now. But uh, we'll just don't sort of avoid any conflict or confusion. Right. So that's just exporting now and you can see there's a progress bar and it's just completing. The important thing is not to pick it up before it's finished exporting, otherwise it'll be corrupted. So you definitely need to be sure that it's finished exporting see that Windows is indicating that it's busy and Wings 3D is saying it's not responding but providing the shape wasn't too massive or there's not um, a problem with it then it should export OK. OK that's done. Now we'll switch to Bryce. So in Bryce file and import object here find where you've saved your object what we call Woven Cube 3 there it is open just check that and it'll import the object. The thing about object format, OBJ format, is it's already smooth. So just give this a quick render in the main viewpoint and you'll see that this appears on fairly smooth on the outside and it's not faceted. That's handy so we don't need to do that operation again. Uh, switch views, I'll sw use 3 to take a side view. And zoom in a bit, you can see that it's not coming at ground level. So the thing to do is lower it so that the wireframe is touching the surface so it's not floating one back for the perspective camera view and I'll lift the camera up and point it down at my object. So to render this I'm going to use obscure lighting so that's an advanced render mode so I'm going to reduce the document set up here to one to one ratio and choose 700 so just make it a bit smaller and then narrow the field of view because this is going to be sort of a still life arrangement so a narrow field of view would seem appropriate so here we are regular rendering mode right now create radial light I'm just going to change its family so we can identify it and set that name in the attributes to background must be spelt correctly and must be capitalized so it can be targeted by the light source I'm going to edit this now and set it to true ambience optimized use gel include only 
background that's itself and in the procedural tab here just reset it to default grey and check out and check out of that finally I'm going to scale it up to encompass the scene if this intersects the infinite plane at the bottom here then you'll see a line and I might have to enlarge it still further but we'll see how it goes the next thing to do is go into the Skylab and select image based lighting so go to the image based lighting tab here and open an image based HDRI so we've got one of Horos here garage closed that's the uh, pixel diameter of this light probe since it's not going to be visible except as a reflection we can choose a low resolution one we're going to raise the intensity to 8 lower the quality to 16 don't need a high quality turn the specularity off so set that to 0 I'm going to choose turn true ambience optimization off so it's a direct light source I'm going to use apply to light source I've got the scaling of that on this control so I can get more light out of it if I need it I'm going to choose light from inside I'm going to turn cast shadows off I'm going to make sure when it's used as a background that I add it to the sky and the critical thing is to include the background so that's including the light source I'll now check out of this and turn the atmosphere off and set it to fully black and then finally the, in the render options choose premium effects I'm going to set the raise per pixel down to 4 for previewing true ambience true ambience scattering correction boost light and maximum ray depth of 4 one other thing to do is holding the control key down left click where this cube is select this cube which came from wings and modify the material just simply to have 15 reflection so it will reflect a bit of the HDRI backdrop that we've added to the sky which is black you can already see there's a little bit of thing going on in the preview here only the reflections Unless, if we want to see what Trambians looks like in this you need accurate rendering selected so you can see from this preview there's not enough light back into the Skylab image based lighting I'll increase this to 50 we can't get a reasonable preview in here we can only render in scene and see the reflections that won't do the image based lighting we can see we've got a bit more light in the nano preview here now at this point I might consider adding in the sun but moving it off to one side so it's providing a bit of direct light so we'll, we can see in here that we've got some direct light on the scene this shadow region will be filled in by true ambience effect so I'm just moving that sun right round and I think I'll go to sun and moon and go sun shadows and turn the softness up but if I want to soften shadow in premium effects render options I'll need soft shadows set while I'm here I'm going to set the depth of field and set it to the current selection which is the object I might have to play with the lens radius to determine how much blurring over the distance we get but we'll see about that let's render preview and see what I've got okay not looking too bad looks a little bit bright I could uh, change the color of this material and then it's to be able to see more of the reflections also you can see the line I talked about as a result of the light source which we're showing faintly here this is this circle I wonder if I can make that show up a bit better for you by fiddling with the depth control a little bit I suppose oh, there it is so that's the edge there we're seeing so if I make this light source a bit bigger we'll shift that edge back and it won't be in view now and then I'll modify the material of the cube I'll make it oh, I'll make it an orange color why not so I'll make it sort of this orange color here that'll darken it a bit I might modify that still further yeah, let's see so that's not too bad you can see more of the reflections now we've got fairly interesting lighting setup and I think it's an interesting shape so just move that in and go back to the Skylab have a look Sun position I suppose I don't have to do that in the Skylab I can do that in the main view and get a bit of a preview going on there so it's just looking at this uh, light in this interesting woven effect that we've got render time's not too bad because the material's not transparent if it was a transparent material then the render time would go up tremendously so at this point if this is going to be the final render then and I'm trying to keep this video fairly short go into the render options and select the highest rays per pixel check out of that for rendering efficiency and using all the processor cores and virtual cores if you've got a multi-core processor select high for the priority and render and then we'll see how long it says it's going to take to render this fairly quick setup here then I'll pause the video and you can have a look at the final results so here we go about an hour okay then so I'll pause the video and then you show you the final results